Hi, this is Ryan from Stormbring Magazine. I'm here with Phil from Machine at Phil for Scratch. And how are you doing, man? Good, man. How's yeah. it going? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, you know, on this uh, Black Procession European tour, we're right in the middle. Uh, so I hope the tour is fine so far, except that it's damn cold here in Austria and the uh, middle of Europe. Oh, that's not cold, man. I got my. I rolled out of the bus in my flip flops today through the <laughs> snow. From California, it don't matter. <laughs> no, the tour is going great. Tour yeah. is going great. Great package. Uh, crazy crowds so far through France and Belgium and Amsterdam and up through Scandinavia and Italy last night and sold out tonight. So uh, looking forward to another crazy show, man. Awesome. You mentioned the package because you're now on the tour with Hatebreed and Bleeding Through. Mm -hmm. And I do hope the chemistry with you and the two support fans you have is very good because you will bring them to the Japanese and Australian dates in March too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We felt that we had a strong enough package and uh, that... Uh, They're, yeah, we're all heavy metal bands, but we're all different. So it, it brings, each band is different than the next. And so it brings a, a pretty eclectic package. And uh, we're stoked that we're bringing it all over the world. Uh, approximately one uh, month ago at the NAM uh, in, in California, you do this uh, tribute concert with Bedain guitars. You uh, this uh, playing only cover tunes. Uh, Is it now, compared to the tour, doing such fun gigs, more relaxed for you? Or is the tour also really relaxing? I think that it's something like that to where I'm, I'm playing the, the walk solo in front of, at a Dean party and Reed is there and everybody's, you know, it's going to watch you do the walk solo. I sat and I learned it and tried to play. It was pretty nerve wracking, actually. But uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love playing cover tunes. Me and Rob love playing cover tunes. So it was a good opportunity to play with Dave Lombardo and Corey Taylor and Nick Bocott and Bob Zilla. And Dave Ellison. Uh, yeah, that was the next night. So we got to do, I got to jam with the Hale guys. And so I'm kind of a, like a, a little off the bench guy for Hale to come in and play some covers with, with Mike Portnoy, a buddy of mine, you know, and so that was, that was a lot of fun. Love playing covers. You, you mentioned love playing covers because you did for this uh, Metal Hammer 200 anniversary issue, mm -hmm. uh, Fucking Hostile from Pantera. Yep. Uh, this Dimebag, Daryl, uh, a tribute album was this for the Metal Hammer. Uh, would you say that Dimebag was one of the influences for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, after uh, Vulgar came out, I wasn't a big fan through Cowboys. I remember them as when we'd roll through Texas as, you know, in violence, we'd see, you know, they're this glam band. And I back back then, we took our thrash very seriously. You know, we were just like, they started becoming heavy and we were like, you know, these guys are, they're not a thrash band, you know. And then, <laughs> but Vulgar was undeniable, you know. They had, they were a heavy band at that point and, Nothing but respect, for sure. So, uh, Dimebag, his playing, he's one of the most influential heavy metal guitar players that there, that there was. I mean, he did so many innovative things and, you know, really influenced me as a player, for sure. After the Cheap Indies and uh, Australian dates, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was on the, he was running. He was. <laughs> yeah. uh, This uh, 36 months tour after the blackening will be over. Yeah. Uh, when the record came out, uh, could you imagine that Machine Head will be on the road for at least 36 months after this album? This is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we did not think that we'd be touring that long because, uh, you know, in the past, since I joined the band, we, if we wanted a tour, we would have to okay, we're going on tour, so let's put our own package together and, and go out and headline and uh, We didn't do any support slots in um, through the ashes, and I don't think for Supercharger either. So right out of the gate with the blackening, it's you know, Lamb of God, Heaven and Hell, you know, doing you know the Slipknot dates, doing Metallica dates, doing you know the Mayhem Festival, doing all this crazy stuff, and you know, the Sonospheres and all the amazing. Uh, festivals that we've done too so it's it's like all these things we couldn't pass up couldn't pass up doing six months with Metallica can't pass up doing six months with Slipknot you know biggest metal bands in the world supporting them so we're reaping that work right now by just coming out here and seeing all these new fans and you know there's there's kids and there's girls at our show now there's never girls at a Machine Head show the first time I came through so the, All right, well, a vast majority. We've gone from 98% to like 80%, and that's like a huge you know, turnaround. It's awesome. Um, 
but the fans of course are crying for a new album um, as far as I know you will start writing after the tour is over so or did you start it already writing new songs uh, or how is the status on the success of the Black Man? Well, we, uh, we had a three-month break, which is the longest break in these three years, from August uh, to November of last year, before um, the Megadeth and States tour started. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we took that time to kind of regroup a little bit, and Dave brought some material in, Rob brought some material in, I had a couple ideas, but we just started getting into writing mode a little bit, and then it was time to go back on the road. So I think in April when we're home, towards the end of April, we're going to convene and reconvene into our little jam room and start knocking all the ideas together and, and see what comes out, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Is the, the, the success of the Blackening was humongous. Is the, the pressure now for a new album, do you feel the pressure? Is there a pressure for you in the band? No. no. I mean, Ashes was a success too. And we didn't feel pressure then to come up with, you know, we haven't reached our writing peak yet as a band, I don't think. I don't think that, you know, The Blacking was the first record that I was there for the entirety. And uh, I think with, with the material that Dave McLean's bringing in and Adam's like really learning his instrument and, you know, with me and Rob together, I think that, you know, the next record is going to be the best record. I don't think that I, you know, just another year of us working together and understanding that there's no pressure i mean we're writing music for us that's what the blackening was it wasn't like this oh my god we gotta write a fucking radio signal no what we did <laughs> was go in and write three 10 minute songs you know we wrote those for us and that's what we're going to do on this one too Spoke of about the humongous success of the blackening because uh not far ago uh Fans and the Metal Hammer stuff nominated the Black Hand as the album of the decade. So, uh, what is your personal response to this uh, incredible distinction? I, words really can't explain it. I mean, it's like, what a distinction. You know, the thing that I like about those types of things is their, I think it was reader. I and think it was, stuff, yes. okay, so I think that it was, you know, voted on your peers or the fans. And that's where you truly gauge, you know, yeah, I want to win a Grammy, but just, you know, with some 70-year-old guy going, oh, Slayer, Machine Head, or Shadows Fall, I think I heard a Slayer before, so I'll vote for them. You know, these are the kids that are buying the records. And this is where, you know, from your peers, from the staff, too. So I think that that's, that's such an amazing distinction. It's so great. Okay, the last question is a very intimate. I uh, hope I am allowed to ask you. Uh, you had these this troubles with a uh, cardiologic syncope. So you had, from now then, you had uh, collapses on stage. So how is uh, nowadays your physical condition? Uh, is it so that you say it, it can't happen anymore? Or do you have to live that it might happen again? Uh, uh, yeah, it can definitely happen again. It can, it can happen again, and uh, I'm susceptible for it until... Um, you know, I could get a pacemaker put in, and I've debated doing that. Um, but I've been trying to um, trying to uh, wade through. A lot of things in my life right now and if I can if I can do that on my own then I'd much prefer to do it that way so you know things happen obstacles pop up and you know this is one of them thank you very much for this very honest answers and have fun today on the This, right. this sold out concert in Vienna. Thank yeah. you very much. So, so come out and see the band. <laughs> <laughs>